So everyone, cool. welcome in. Great to have you here. And, and we're going to run through how to plan your documentation with Data Edo. Um, so Piotr is our founder and CEO, and he's going to be leading us through and, and walking through how to really kick things off and plan better with Data Edo, use the tool more efficiently and effectively. Um, I'm Chase Summers. I'm the director of customer operations here at Data Edo as well. Um, so to kick things off for the agenda, we'll have a quick announcement to get things started. Um, then we'll go into a high level implementation plan. So what you should really look at uh, when implementing Data Edo from a high level. And then we'll get into the broader uh, documenting and what that looks like. We will do a Q&A at the end. So first, uh, the big announcement is we are releasing Data Edo 10.4 today. I know a lot of you have been waiting on this um, and it's a pretty wide release. So to cover a few of the flagship features that are coming out. So we are introducing reference data management or lookups as a lot of you may call them or know them as. We will also be introducing a report catalog within the tool. Um, we are adding in a new level of Power BI connector. So not just the metadata, but for reports, data sets, and lineage for Power BI. Um, Azure Data Factory connector will be introduced. And then we will have automated column level lineage for views. So if you're working with views through SQL Server, you can automatically see that lineage through at the column level. Um, and then we will be introducing foreign key relationship tester for SQL Server and Snowflake. So this will be a very quick and, and automated way for you guys to look at that. And then for a lot of our desktop and web users, um, we are introducing open and web button. So within the desktop, you'll have open and web, and it'll take you directly to your web catalog and show you exactly what you were looking at. And then lastly, um, save your favorite SQL queries. So those will be introduced to where you can go in and save those within the catalog. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at the high level plan, implementation plan. So you started, uh, you you um, you bought uh, Data Edo or any other tool and you'd like to get started with documentation and you don't know how, uh, how to get started. So hopefully this will give you a, a, a good, uh, good reference. So um, here's my, my idea of how we could get started with your uh, documentation. So first thing you should consider is split, uh, breaking down your project into smaller uh, smaller sub projects, uh, phases. Um, I call it domains uh, because you can uh, take one data domain, um, which means just a subset of your of your data uh, at a time, and then treat it as a separate project. Um, it's good not to start, uh, you know, plan documenting everything at once because it, this this can be, um, you know, challenging. This can be frustrating, and it's hard to actually, you know, tell. Uh, uh, if you're making, you know, real progress and uh, providing value. So uh, what I suggest is a start with a high-level planning, uh, identify those uh, those uh, those uh, phases, uh, and then start small, right? So uh, each phase will then have uh, its own planning uh, uh, session, then uh, documentation phase, which this is where the the harder hardest part is, then roll out to the users, and then use and maintain of the documentation. So let's uh, talk about uh, roles first. Um, you can identify two types of um, key roles uh, if it, uh, it comes to um, data governance. There are data owners and data stewards. Um, data owners are the ones, uh, people who are responsible for um, particular data, uh, data set or anything, any data artifact or like like a report uh, a table or or you know any type, type of processing um, so they are responsible and they have authority to make decisions they're usually uh, senior people in your organization and they are quite busy but they have the authority and then they are data stewards those are data experts those are you know developers bi developers uh, data architects uh, whoever is really working with data knows everything about it and data stewards do the actual work. So you can you know, think of them as captains and uh, the, the, those guys who actually clean the, the deck uh, of the pirate ship. OK, so uh, planning all of the project, uh, so this is the initial planning uh, stage. Let in first step, identify those data business domains. It can be, you know, for instance, uh, system oriented or uh, like functional oriented, um, department oriented, whatever uh, uh, works in your case. So, for instance, you can uh, say, let's document our CRM first or data warehouse or, uh, you know, anything 
that that makes sense um, in your case. Then uh, you should identify data sources, and that's databases, reporting, and any type of processing ETL. Um, then you should uh, identify data owners and stewards. Uh, th this, uh, those are groups because data owners and stewards they apply to specific um, artifacts, specific you know objects. You can have you know one owner owning customers table and the other owning orders table, for instance, right? So you know you just identify who those people will be, like groups that you will be uh, selecting from. Um, then. Um, you identify also the uh, the consumers, so who will be using the documentations? Who 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 will uh, be uh, the, the the user who the, who the documentation will will serve? Right? So this, these are business users, data analysts, whoever is working with data, right? So it's good to know upfront who's who are doing uh, this um, uh, for. And the last point, uh, you cannot see the full text here, but it's um, you uh, choose the uh, classifications. So um, you probably want to uh, tag um, sensitive information. Uh, so it's, you, you should know up front if you're going to use PII, GDPR, KIPA, or anything else. You can add in the future, but it's good to know up front which uh, they are. OK, let's move on to the planning of the, of the phase. So uh, you have uh, um, created a list of sources and appointed stewards and uh, um, uh, and owners, and also consumers. So in this phase, you re re review and refine it. Um, then there's the documentation part. Uh, uh, there's another section uh, when I, I'll go into detail uh, about uh, about the documentation. There's there are multiple uh, elements of documentation uh, that you should plan separately and do separately. Uh, this can be done by you know, same person or uh, multiple people. More on that later. Then there's rollout. Uh, you you review those uh, consumer groups and uh, create lists of, of those uh, users. Uh, you have to set up the accounts and provide training. Uh, good ways to invite those people for a demo. Uh, you would record it and share it uh, uh, in your intranet. Then it's also good to promote it. So share it on your Teams or Slack. Uh, send it with emails, put it in your, you know, link link it on your SharePoint or Confluence, you know, use any way so that you, people actually know that, that it's there. And the last phase is uh, when you use and maintain. So, you know, ideally people who actually using documentation on a daily basis. Um, you should ask for feedback, uh, get this feedback using our internal comments module or any other way like email or communicators. Uh, you should also review uh, new objects uh, and columns uh, from schema change tracking. So see what new objects are created, uh, what new tables, you know, procedures and reports and so on, and then um, provide documentation for the, for the new elements. And Make sure you update documentation where needed. So whatever you notice, something needs uh, updating. Make sure you do it. Make sure it's uh, it's, uh, it's the documentation's uh, alive. All right. So let's uh, uh, dive deeper into planning of the documentation. So identifying sources. Uh, here's an example of how that might look. Um, so data sources, ETLs, and BI uh, tools reporting. I identified here uh, which database I like to document and uh, what's the platform, who are the experts. That's important because we'll, I'll be picking uh, data stewards from that group. Who's the admin? Uh, you know, I have to talk to that person to, to you know set up the connection and so on. So I you know I propose a very simple uh, spreadsheet like that uh, to uh, make an inventory of, of what I actually want to document. Then assigning uh, responsibilities, so owners and stewards. Um, I listed those uh, sources uh, I mentioned before, and then I broke it down by um, those specific uh, documentation uh, assets that I'm going to create. So 
database, uh, data dictionary documentation, BI reports, subject areas, data classification, lineage, and so on. I treat it separately. I assign owner and uh, steward. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at the documentation. Um, first part is you need to uh, set up connections. Uh, so you import all of all, all the sources you can. You uh, you know we support and uh, uh, you'd like to document. So databases, BI, ETL, and make sure you schedule the the updates so that the the, the catalog is up to date. Right. So importing is um, you know it's the easy part and scheduling requires some you know some admin work. Um, it's really good to make sure that those doc uh, those updates are done going. Um, ideally daily, uh, overnight, or at least weekly, so that the schema in the documentation is up to date. Um, so then you can start with subject areas. Um, subject areas are the those those um, objects that break down your your sources to smaller pieces, uh, you know, logical or, or, or functional. Um, so what you do, you go through the uh, list of tables and other objects in a, in, a, uh, in your data source, and then group them, assign uh, subject areas. So in desktop, you, you just select a group of uh, select a group of tables, then right click and create new um, subject area and, or, or assign to a, an existing one. Um, when so the, the the point is to break down the the, the source into smaller uh, smaller elements, more logical, and then provide description for each, uh, maybe an uh, ear diagram as well. And the way to pro track progress here is just you see what uh, subject areas are created uh, for if if they are uh, if all the objects are assigned to uh, on the list or assigned to uh, at least one. Um, then a good uh, approach would be to profile the data. You can run a bulk profiling and save it in the repository. Uh, to save it in the repository, you need to enable it first. So make sure you enable uh, saving. And then uh, a safe way is to run distribution only uh, because it doesn't include, so that's the one on the left, it doesn't include any potentially sensitive information. If you run it and save it, you'll have uh, information on the uh, breakdown on on the data in every uh, column in your database, and uh, so you can run it, um, run it and save it. Just leave it like that, and then uh, there's a full profiling, uh, but that that requires you re reviewing, so you don't save any you know sensitive information. In the future, we'll be adding some automation on that, so we actually try to detect what's uh, sensitive and not allow you to save it in the repository. So like, for instance, uh, sample emails or, or names or things like that. Uh, but for now, you, you run it and you, you should review and, uh, and uh, like re remove, cleanse the, the, the sensitive data before saving into the repository. Um, then there's the documentation of the, of the data itself. So your tables views um, and that's the the I think the, the hardest part takes the more, more most work and that's also probably the most valuable part so you go uh, subject area uh, by subject area and then table by table and uh, you provide description of the table so what's the what's the purpose of the table uh, maybe provide a title and alias for for each. Then uh, uh, for each table, you also go column by column and describe it. What's the column for? Provide alias type. Um, you, for, for each table, you review if there's a primary key or, or unique keys. Quite often there's a primary key, but uh, there's some other business keys. So for instance, there's like customer ID and there's customer number. So, you know, you can, if you assume it's uh, unique, the customer number is unique, you should create a unique key so that other know uh, was the what are they you know like uh, constraints on the on the table um, ideally tables should have at least one primary or unique key um, then you identify which 
columns are potentially foreign keys. With this new foreign key tester, you can, uh, as you create, you can test if it's actually unique. Uh, currently for SQL Server only, uh, we're working on uh, uh, on the new data sources uh, right now. So foreign keys. And uh, last thing, uh, create lookups. Um, so this is the new module we're releasing today. Um, lookups allow you to uh, document um, specific values in a column. So let's say we have a document status. So document status will have uh, like zero, one, and two. No one knows what that means. So you can create a lookup for that, call it uh, order status or invoice status, and then uh, data either will, will extract those unique values and you can provide description for that, right? So what, what does zero, what does one, and what does two mean? Um, right, so you just review which columns are potentially uh, you know, should be uh, like a lookup, uh, should have a lookup uh, look table. And um, tracking progress, uh, you can use a uh, progress tracking feature that you can see over here. Um, then um, you can document your BI reports. Uh, today we're shipping report catalog um, and with BI connector. Uh, Power BI connector. We're working on more connectors for uh, Tableau um, and other uh, BI tools uh, we'll be working on in the future. Uh, you can also document them manually. So you can document your key reports, just create them you know, manually in the catalog. Um, yeah, so the, the, the documentation of reports, uh, you uh, what you do is you uh, provide description for the uh, each report, like you know, one sentence, what it represents, and then link uh, to uh, business glossary uh, terms um, in the glossary. If it's there already, if, if not, you have to go back to that. That uh, uh, after we, you create a business glossary that I'll uh, describe in a second. So you know, describing a report what it what it represents and linking business glossary to business glossary terms. Uh, that's uh, like a documentation for the for the uh, for your reports. Uh, then business glossary. So maybe these uh, steps could be switched. Um, you identify uh, first step is you identify the terms. Uh, you can use a status field um, as a you can create a custom field uh, called status. Uh, we'll be creating a native field for that uh, in the in the future. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, on the next slide, I'll show you how you can uh, brainstorm that. Uh, then you provide definitions and change status for review. That's uh, the role of data steward to provide definitions. Uh, you also should link uh, terms to data and reports. For each, for each term, you should identify where you can find this information in, in your databases. Um, then owners should approve or reject the definition. Um, and uh, the tracking of progress is uh, checking how many terms you have and uh, what's you know how many approved there are. So a few ideas on uh, brainstorming of the glossary. Um, first, top-down approach. So first, you identify your um, keywords in your domain. So like nouns, you start with nouns. So customer, patient, vendor, whatever noun is uh, you know uh, very important in your business, you start with that. Then you, you check also like subtypes. So if you have a customer, so what's lost customer, what's prospect customer, and and so on. Uh, that's also um, a good good way to start. And you check your key metrics. So like revenue, returning revenue, uh, lead conversion, ARR, and and so on. Right. So you define you, you define that. Uh, provide the, the like identify those keywords. Then you can also ask people. What's uh, not clear for for people, especially new people? What the you know you're using some language in your organization, but if someone new joins, they have you know there it's not obvious for them what it means in your business. And you also try to identify uh, when you're talking about reports, analytics, and so on. Uh, what questions developers and report users ask when they uh, look at it? So, for instance, is this net or gross profit? Right? If they ask that. Probably it's not clear what uh, what uh, what it means, and uh, it should be also linked in, in the report. So, you know, anything that's not clear, maybe that's a good uh, idea for the for the for the business term. 
Uh, then there's a bottom-up approach. So you uh, start with the reports and uh, check what uh, measures you have on the reports, what filters you use on the reports, and also what are the dimensions. So dimensions could be like a country or a, you know, a business division or something like that. You also review key tables and columns, right? So you check uh, if they are also fit into that category. And probably you should have at least, uh, you know, it's it might be a good idea to uh, create uh, a, um, a term for every lookup and at least for some va values. So um, invoice status is a, is a lookup, right? And uh, probably that should be uh, defined. And as particular statuses like pending invoice, paid invoice, and so on, also should be defined. What does it mean if the invoice is paid? Um, you know, might seem obvious, but maybe there's some like you know more to it uh, in your organization, the way you define it in your reporting. Um, next step: data classification. Run classifications for for uh, the spe spe specific classifications over here. We have like CCPA, Firepower, GDPR. Maybe you have your own custom one. You can uh, define it in uh, data data, and you run uh, our class uh, uh, data classification module uh, and review those suggestions it, it produces. Save it in the repository, and you can see over here it's it, the way of tracking. So it's really hard to tell whether Mm, you uh, you have all the fields, um, but you can see at least how many fields you have already classified in the in the and what's the percentage in the in particular sources. Um, the next step is data lineage and ETL. Um, so you can import ETL if you have a connector. So we have connectors for process. Uh, SSIS, DBT. Uh, today we're shipping uh, Azure Data Factory. We're, we'll be adding uh, more connectors uh, in the future. Uh, or you can create packages manually because uh, Data Data allows you to define data lineage manually. So you can like uh, um, create package manually in the repository. So you can uh, then you know document how the how the data is loaded. Um, so you uh, should check tables. So if they're like data warehouse tables, for instance, you should check if they have uh, uh, if they have lineage. Um, every data table in data warehouse probably uh, you know is loaded uh, there on a daily basis. Then it's uh, it should have lineage. Um, the same for views. So every view has a lineage. By definition, and uh, in 10.3 and 10.4, we uh, added some automation. 10.3 uh, had the uh, lineage from dependencies, and 10.4 has a column level lineage uh, automated from SQL Server and Azure SQL. Um, from uh, SQL, we, we, we parse it, so that's how we uh, produce it automatically. Then for stores procedures, you Check store procedure by store procedure, and uh, we have suggestions based based on the text of the procedure. And you just review if you you know check the code if uh, that's complete. In the future, we'll be automating that as well. Um, you check every ETL package if it actually includes all the all the processing logic. You check re reports and BI data sets if they have a source. So every report obviously has a source, and data sets uh, in the BI also have a source, so you should map that too. And the last set you create are those lookups. Uh, I mentioned that in the data dictionary because you create them bottom up uh, when you check the tables, when you document tables. Uh, in this step, you can review that. Um, so. Uh, check lookups and I identify if they in data either you can uh, create a lookup lookup it's like a, a separate entity and it's linked to columns and it can be linked to multiple columns um, so we have a, like an invoice status or currency for instance currency is a good example you, you probably have a, a ton of tables that use cur uh, currency column um, you, you should uh, review if the uh, currency lookup has is linked to all the occurrences in your database, so this is where you do it. Uh, 
you uh, load values, they tell you the loads those values from, from the database and uh, from, from the unique values uh, it were, that were found, you, it creates a suggestion, so you re review those suggestions, list, so you approve which values are valid, which are not. Uh, databases have some, some you know, uh, dirty data, so you, you don't, you know, not all the values are valid, so you re reject them. Um, then you provide description for for values. Um, you know, uh, for currency, it's not maybe necessary because everyone knows what USD or GBP is. Uh, uh, but maybe you can provide descriptions. Uh, as, right. Um, then uh, data owner should approve that. Um, yeah, and the tracking is the number, you check the number of lookups uh, in the database. There's no way to tell how many there should be, but if there's just two, you know, there's too little. Um, we'll be checking some, some benchmarks in the future, so may maybe we can provide you with uh, how many you could expect uh, in a good documentation. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can check how many lookups were defined. Okay, so uh, after that, you you roll it out and hopefully get uh, value from the documentation. There, there, there's a lot of information. If you've done all those steps, you created a lot of information that was not obvious for everyone uh, in your organization. So anyone, you know, we, we added reporting. So everyone is using reporting in your organization so they can learn about uh, key reports. They can learn what they represent and uh, link it to your to the definitions, uh, how your organization defines uh, specific terms in, and, and metrics in your, yeah. And next step, so where do you go from here? So number one is make sure you download and upgrade to 10.4 today. Um, hopefully majority of you plan to do so, but if you have any issues with that, please let us know. Um, reach out to Alex, she'll get a support meeting, she'll get an upgrade meeting if you need help with it. But otherwise, number one is just download it. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, so Alex's email is here. And then that's for customers. If you are a new customer to Data Edo or you're just exploring Data Edo, obviously you won't have access to Alex, but you can just reach out to support directly and they will make sure to help you out. For metadata extraction. So this is a new program that we're starting to work with, which essentially we learned that a lot of our customers or even prospects and new customers that are coming in. We don't support all of your data sources. Um, and as you can imagine, in the world of data, we're likely never going to. However, we do have a team devoted to helping customers with one-off connectors that maybe we don't support, but you would like to document or have within Dayito. So if you run across any of those, please reach out to Alex if you're a customer. And if you're a new customer or someone exploring Dayito and you would like to see if we can help you get some of your metadata into Dayito, reach out to Patrick at Dayito.com. But either way, we want to make sure that we can help serve you guys to, to whatever level you need. And, and this is a great resource that we encourage you to take advantage of. And just to mention, it doesn't have any costs associated. And upgrade your plan. So I know a lot of the things that we've covered here, like reference data management, report catalog, um, really benefits in the web catalog as well for your viewers. So if you aren't on one of those plans, you want to take advantage of the live web catalog, you want to take advantage of a lot of the new features, um, Feel free to reach out. We're happy to discuss um, a heavy discount for legacy plan subscribers. So as we've introduced new pricing into Dayito and really had to meet the market where it's at, we still want to make sure that our current customers have a very clear route to upgrades um, and that it's not going to break your budget to do so. So feel free to reach out to Jonathan at Dayito.com for any type of upgrading questions or, or if you're interested in what that looks like for a discount or even a demo of what we offer um, in the current status of Data Edo. And I know we have a few questions now, so we'll continue to answer these and, and continue to ask them as we're answering them here. Um, so Piotr, Mark also asked if there's any suggestion on how to use data profiling when they document the development instance, but want to profile only production. Only production. Okay, what you could do uh, when you connect, uh, so connection, uh, you, you can uh, import schema from dev and then when you connect to, um, when you profile, you can uh, change the connection to prod. So you can uh, run that on, on prod, right? That would work. 
Awesome. Yeah, I ho hope that uh, that's a that's a solution for you. Mark, if you run into any issues with that, let us know, and we'll make sure to get a meeting set up and and run through it. Yeah, if you don't have specific columns, you can always uncheck it. But if if they don't exist, it will just say it failed. But uh, there shouldn't be an issue with that. Okay. Awesome. Piotr, we can go ahead to the last slide and and share our contact information and just wrap things up for everybody. Um, if you have any additional questions, as mentioned, for customers, Alex is going to be your best point of contact. She is an absolute rock star, and we'll make sure that you guys have what you need. Um, and for people exploring the tool, many of you, I'm sure, have already met Patrick, um, but he's going to be your best resource for questions there. Um, anything above and beyond, you can always reach out. Um, we have live chat on our website. We have support available for you guys. And then um, also, Piotr and I have our contact information here, so feel free to reach out to us directly. Our responses may not be as quick as everyone else that I mentioned, which is why I mentioned them. Um, but, you know, we are always here and, and happy to, to help out. So appreciate you all joining today. And, and hopefully Piotr was able to share with you a lot of tips and, and making sure that you're documenting efficiently and able to scale this out. And we plan to do a, a few more of these webinars in the next couple of months. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and then if you do need anything in the meantime, uh, let us know. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.